This is lesson 6-5 on solving square roots and other radical equations. Um, some of you were in class, and I actually taught this lesson in class, but for those of you who are absent, uh, I know some of you were gone for Thanksgiving and some of you were sick, um, you can go ahead and watch this lesson. So our objectives, we're going to be answering the question, how can we take our knowledge of square roots and apply it to solving them? So we're going to solve square root equations by applying our understanding of roots and then also solve other radical equations. So for our vocabulary, a radical equation is an equation that has a variable and a radicand or a variable with a rational exponent. So the radicand is that root symbol or we can have um, a rational exponent. If the radical uh, has index 2, the equation is understood to be a square root equation. Uh, sometimes you'll have a 3, that's a third root, or a 4, that's a fourth root. All right, so what is the solution of 3 plus the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 8? All right, so um, if we wanted to solve this, first thing we need to do is get the square root part by itself so that we can square both sides, um, and then we can solve from there. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I get the square root of 2x minus 3 is 5. Now, I want to get rid of the square root, so I square both sides to cancel out that square root. So I have 2x minus 3 equals 25. Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides, just like I would solve a normal equation. So 2x equals 28. x equals 14. There you go. Um, make sure with square roots that you always check your answer, because sometimes we'll have, like, negative numbers, and we can't do that. So 14 times 2 is 28, 28 minus 3 is 25, squared 25 is 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8. The solution checks, so we're good. Not so bad, right? Alright, why don't you go ahead and try this one. I'll put it up here in a second. Square root of 4x plus 1 minus 5 equals 0. Okay, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own first. Okay, first thing we do is add 5. Square root of 4x plus 1 is 5. Now I'm going to square both sides. 4x plus 1 is 25. Subtract 1. 4x equals 24. Divide by 4. x equals 6. Make sure you plug it back in. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. Squared 25 is 5. 5 minus 5 equals 0. Our solution checks. Alright, um, now let's go ahead and solve this one. Now, just like what we did with um, radicals, you do the same thing with exponents. So we want to get the exponent part by itself first. So the first thing we're going to do to get the exponent by itself is we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I have x plus 1 to the 2 thirds power equals 4. Now, if I wanted to get rid of to the 2 thirds power, I want to make that power be 1. I would multiply by 3 halves so that the 3's and the 2's cancel. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I have 4 to the 3 halves power. So x plus 1 is 4 to the 3 halves power. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that um, in radical form. So that's the square root of 4 cubed. Do we have a square root of 4? We do. Square root of 4 is 2, but the square root of 4 can also be negative 2. So I'm going to set up two equations. So 2 cubed and x plus 1 equals negative 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8. So x plus 1 equals 8. Subtract 1. x equals 7. Also, uh, subtract 1. This one is negative 8. x equals negative 9. So when you're taking a square root, you always have a positive root and you have a negative root. Don't forget that. It's very important. Okay, we're going to try both of these back into our equation. Um, I'm actually going to write this one out. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 to the 2 thirds power. Um, the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So 3 times 4 equals 12. That one checks. Um, negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. 
the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So that one also checks. So both of our answers are solutions. They are both good answers. Alright, moving on to our next problem. Um, what is the solution of the fifth root of x plus 1 cubed plus 1 equals 25? Okay, I know this one looks scary, but just break it down by part. What do we want? What's our goal first? Well, the first thing we want to do is get the radicand part by itself. So let's start by subtracting 1. So I have 3 times the fifth root of x plus 1 cubed equals 24. Now, I'm going to divide by 3 to get the radicand part by itself. So I have the fifth root of x plus 1 cubed equals 8. Now, in order to get rid of this fifth root of x plus 1 cubed, I'm going to go ahead and change this into an exponent. And you remember that the part, the radicand, becomes a denominator, and this becomes a numerator. So this is actually x plus 1 raised to the 3 fifths power. So if I want to get rid of it, what do I need to multiply by to make that exponent be 1? By 5 thirds. So those cancel. But I also have to do that to this side too. Raise it to the 5 thirds power. So I have x plus 1 left over here. Oops. x plus 1 left over here. Now I have um, 8 to the 5 thirds power. That's the same as the cubed root of 8 to the 5th power. Is there a cubed root of 8? Yes, it's 2. So we have 2 to the 5th power. What's 2 to the 5th power? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So x plus 1 equals 32. Subtract 1 from both sides. x equals 33. You want to go ahead and check the answer. Um, 33 plus 1 is 34. Um, I have to do this in my calculator. 34 cubed is 39,304. I'm going to raise that to the 1 -fifth power mm, and multiply that times 3 and then I'm going to subtract 1 and la -dee da I get 25. That's fun. Alright, um, hope you got that one. There it is again. Oops. Wait, did I add one? I think I added one. Oops. So the answer should be 31. All right, so to solve this one, what would you do? You divide by 2, then raise it to the 3 halves power. 3 halves power. Um, since you're going to be taking a, a root, um, well, you have to cube it first, take the square root, subtract 3. There you go. All right. Uh, here's an applied problem. For a meteor crater in Arizona, the formula d equals 2 times the cube root of v divided by 0.3 relates the diameter d of the rim in meters to the volume v in cubic meters. What is the volume of the meteor crater? All values are approximate. Um, so they're going to give us that the diameter is 1.2 kilometers. Um, and do you remember from, like, should be um, probably biology, maybe chemistry. Um, King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk to relate our um, metric measurements. So if we're going to start at kilometers, um, this is in meters, so we need to be in meters, so we need to move one, two, three decimal places to the right. So that's how we get 1,200 meters. So kilometers to meters is that one. Um, and then once we convert to meters, then we can just go ahead and plug that into our problem. Pretty simple. Oops, I thought I had that. Okay, so if our diameter is 1,200 so 1,200 equals 2 times the cubed root of v divided by 0.03. First thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 2. So I have 600 equals the cubed root of v divided by 0.03. 
Then I'm going to cube both sides to get rid of the cube and the cubed root. So 600 cubed is 216. And then one, two, three, six zeros. Okay, and that equals V divided by 0 0.03. So then we multiply both sides by 0 0.03 times 0 0.03, and I get the volume equals 6, 4, 8, and then 4 zeros. Okay, and then we need to put that into our units. It's volume, that's what we're trying to find. So our volume is in meters cubed. That's uh, pretty big this. volume. Alright, um, also we need to check for extraneous solutions. Sometimes you'll get solutions that look like solutions, but they aren't actually solutions. Um, so what we're going to do for this one is we want to get the square root by itself. So we're going to start by adding 5 to both sides. Now, in order to get rid of the square root, we have to square both sides. But don't forget, when you square a binomial, you're actually foiling. So we have x plus 5, the quantity squared. So we're going to use foil and multiply x plus 5 times x plus 5. So you have x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. So what you actually have on that um, right side is x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then you have x plus 7 over here equal to each other. Now if they're equal, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to move everything over to one side and then see if maybe we can foil it or something. Okay, so move everything to one side. x squared plus 9x plus 18. Is that factorable? Yes, it is. We get x plus 3, x plus 6. Set each one equal to 0. So you have negative 6 and negative 3. Now what you have to do is you have to check these. Um, so if you plug in negative 6, negative 6 plus 7 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And 1 minus 5, does that equal negative 6? No, it doesn't. So negative 6 is not a solution. Let's try negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And 4, hmm, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. There we go. And 2 minus 5, does that equal negative 3? Yes, it does. So negative 3 is our only solution for this one. Um, I'm holding this. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and try this one. I know you can do it. Alright, so when you solve these, you should get 10 and 1 as your answers. You can go back and look through at my work if you didn't quite get that. Um, when you plug them in, 10 times 5 is 50. 50 minus 1 is 49. 40, square root of 49 is 7. So I have 7 plus 3 equals 10. That one works. Um, but if you plug in 1, 1 times 5 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And 2 plus 3, does that equal 1? It does not. So that means 10 is our only solution. 1 is not a solution. Mom. All right, if we have two radicals, so the point before was to get the radical by itself. So what we're going to do is set the radicals on different sides of the equation, and then we're going to square both sides, and then we'll have to do a second squaring. So we're going to go ahead and add the square root of x to one side, and then we're going to square both sides. Remember, we have to foil. So we get um, square root of x plus 1 squared. So we have 2x plus 1 on one side, x plus 2 squared x plus 1 on the other side. So go ahead and subtract x, subtract 1, so you have that 2 squared x by itself. And then we're going to square both sides again. So we get x squared equals um, 4x. Okay, did you follow that? If you didn't, come see me, please. I want to make sure you understand. Okay, then we're going to subtract 4x and then set equal to 0. We can factor out an x. So you have x, x minus 4 equals 0. So we get our so two solutions are 0 and 4. And if you check both of them, they both work. Okay, so for this one, you're going to do the same thing. Add square root of x to the other side. Square both sides. Um, make sure you foil the right side. Simplify. Get the square root by itself again. And then square both sides again. And then simplify again and factor from there. It's a lot of work, but it's pretty easily done. 
All right, and that's your lesson for 6-5. Hope you have a great night.